So I want to look at a pretty fundamental math skill today, and that is having a written method for division. And I'm gonna be looking at short division, which is what people sometimes refer to as the bus stop method. So the reason I thought it'd be useful to look at this is because I know that people find it really difficult to remember and to do this accurately. And I know that because I was definitely one of those people that took me so long to remember how to do this. And I think the reason for that was because I didn't understand what was going on. I had just been shown how to follow this routine that you put the number here and then you end up carrying over a number. And you know, I always kind of got confused which bits went where and all that sort of stuff. So once I understood what was going on, you know, I, I remembered it perfectly from that point onwards. So I want to share that with you today show you what is going on when we use that method of division. Hopefully, if you're one of those people that struggles to remember it, it might seem a bit more complicated at first when I kind of tear it apart and, and show you what's going on behind the scenes, as it were. But once you've got your head around it, it should really help you to remember it. So let's get started with an example. I'm gonna do 714 divided by three. I'm gonna show you how we normally do that and then at the same time, I'll show you kind of as I'm taking it apart so you can see what's happening as we go along. So we'd normally write it like this, wouldn't we? Put that three outside our bus stop if, <laughs> to continue the bus stop analogy. And then we've got 714 there. So that 714 represents 700 and 10. And then we've got a four as well in our ones column, haven't we? So what we're doing overall really is we're saying, if I was counting up in threes, how many would I've got to by the time I get to 714? So three, six, nine, 12, and so on. Obviously that's gonna take you forever to do it like that. That's why we need an alternative method, but, but that's kind of what we're asking here. So first off we say, how many threes go into seven? So three, six, two lots of three will definitely fit in. Once I get up to nine, that's too many, isn't it? That's bigger than seven. It's bigger than the number that we're talking about. So I can't fit three lots of three into seven, but I can fit two lots. So I put that two up there. What's actually happening, if we look at the second version, is that we've got our hundreds column here. So actually what we're doing is, we are working out how many threes will fit into 700. But because it's in the hundreds column, we are putting threes in, in groups of a hundred. So a hundred lots of three is 300, 200 lots of three is 600, 300 lots of three is 900 and so on. And we're saying, how many of these groups of a hundred threes will fit into 700? Well, I could fit two groups of a hundred threes because that would be 600, 900 is too big. And so two groups, I'm going to write that two above, but two groups of 300 is 600. And I wanted to know how many threes go into 700. So there's, there's an extra hundred there, isn't there? Well, what we do is we shift that hundred over to the next column. We deal with it when we're in our tens column. And if I write, so we have that 100 left over. And if I write that one there, because of where I've written it in front of the 10, it's representing a hundred, isn't it? So I've only written one, but it represents a hundred and it's that hundred that we had left over. Now I ask, how many threes go into 110? But this is our tens column, don't forget. So we're gonna be putting our threes in groups of 10, so 30, you know, 10 threes is 30, 20, threes is 60, in other words, you know, two blocks of 10 threes, and then 90, 120, 150, and so on. Okay, so how many of those groups will fit into 110? Well, I can fit three groups worth in, can't I? That would be 90, 120 would be too big. So I can fit three groups in, three groups of 30 is, is 90, well, actually I was wanted to know how many threes fit into 110. So I've got 20 kind of left over, 20 that I still haven't accounted for. Um, and we're gonna carry that over to our next column, which is our ones column. And if I just write two in front of the four, 
that two represents 20, doesn't it? So that's the 20 that we're going to deal with. Going back to the original method, just to catch up with what I did there. So we had said, how many threes go into seven? Two threes go into seven, and there's one left over. And then we say, how many threes go into 11? Well, three lots of three is nine, so I can definitely fit three threes into 11, and there will be two left over. That two will then sit in front of the four to represent 24. And then the final bit, how many threes go into 24? It is eight. Eight threes are 24. And the same on the expanded version here. How many threes go into 24? It is eight. So as I said, if you haven't sort of thought about what's going on before, or you haven't seen this explained like this before, it probably just seems a bit more complicated to start with. Um, but that extra complication brings with it some understanding. And if you can get your head around that, and it's worth persevering with, you will be able to remember this forever. Okay, and you won't just have to remember the routine that I carry this over and da 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 because you'll understand what's going on and that's the best way to remember stuff by understanding it. Let me show you one more example and then we'll wrap everything up. I'm going to do 896 divided by 7 this time. I'm going to do the same thing again. I have the, the expanded version and the short version as well so you can put them side by side and hopefully see what's going on. Right, so we would write it like this, wouldn't we? 896 divided by 7, 896, but I'm going to expand that out. So I've got 800 and 90 and 6. And I want to know how many 7s will fit into that. I'm going to do one column at a time. So the first thing is that 8, you know, it's 800, it's in the hundreds column. So I'm asking how many 7s go into 800. That's really what's happening in that first column. But I'm going to count up in groups of 100, 100 sevens at a time. So 700, 1,400. In fact, already that's too big, isn't it? So I can only fit one group of 100 sevens in. So I'll put that one there, one group of 100 sevens. And I'll do the same over here. That's that one. How many sevens go into eight, we would say, wouldn't we? Well, one seven, but you've got one left over, one remainder, which carries over like that back to the expanded version then. So we said, how many sevens go into 800, but we're doing it in groups of 100. Well, 100 sevens is 700. I've got 100 left over, which needs to be accounted for. So I'm gonna deal with it. And if I put a one in front of that nine, the one is actually representing 100, isn't it? So the next step, how many sevens go into 190? But this is our tens column. So I'm gonna count up in 10 groups of seven at a time, so 70. 140, 210, and already that's too big, isn't it? So I could fit two groups in. I write that two there. Two groups was 140, and I was interested in how many fit into 190, so there's 50 left unaccounted for there. We're gonna deal with that in the ones column. And if I just put a five in front of that six, that five is now representing 50, right? Let's catch up with the short version. So it was how many sevens go into 19? Well, two lots of seven is 14 and there's five left over. So then the final thing, how many sevens go into 56? That is eight. Eight lots of seven is 56. Same over here, how many sevens go into 56? That is eight. So 896 divided by seven is 128. As I said, if this is the first time you're seeing it, it probably just seems more complicated and you might even be a little bit more confused, but trust me, try and have a go at a few questions on your own and try and break them apart as I did and do the, you know, the kind of original method and just see if you can work out yourself what's going on. You can even come back, rewatch the video, just check, yeah, yeah, I did get all that right. Okay, I think I understand it now. Just keep practicing, okay? So when you start to feel like, ah, I am beginning to understand this, keep practicing and that will sink down, kind of solidify. And you will hopefully find that you've got this remembered for life. If you can understand it like this and remember it like this, you will have that for life, okay? Instead of just remembering the routine and oh, I carry this number over here. That's really easy to forget that method, okay? Thank you very much for watching. If you found it useful, please check out some of my other videos and do all that good YouTube stuff, liking, subscribing, and so on. Tell your friends about it. 
and um, I will be back next week for another maths video.